Hi, I'm Daniel and this is Asheville. Today I want to talk about health and safety in the workplace, accountability and consequences. What you're about to see is a dramatization of a very real scenario. Okay, um, I need to uh, go and get some tickets reprinted off Simon. Okay. What's the situation with Diesel? Struggling. Got any quotes? Yeah, a couple of coming through. Hopefully they're going to call me tomorrow, so that we can have it Thursday, hopefully. Are we busy? Busy enough. Uh, I think I see your three o'clock turning up. All right, All right cool. Sorry. Have you managed to print them tickets? I can't at the moment, I haven't got the paper on. You haven't got enough tickets to do it? No cars. Uh, all right, mate. Sorry about that. No, I haven't got any for three weeks now. No cars for three weeks. But there was nothing I could do. I'm so sorry. Mr. Louise, come with us. Dr. Okawale, the witness. Mr. Louise, do you know why you're here today? I do, yes. You're here in relation to the death of one of your employees, Terry Duff. That's correct, isn't it? Yes. Have you thought about what you're going to say to the court today? Well, yes, I guess so. I'm just going to answer, answer questions. Do you think that you did everything within your power to stop this death from happening? I believe I did. So you're telling this court now that you, as the director of the company, did everything within your power to prevent this death occurring? I, I believe I did. It will be a reoccurring theme throughout my cross-examination. I'm going to ask you questions covering three topics. Firstly, I'll deal with your responsibility. Secondly, we'll talk about the incident. Um, and then finally, I'll ask you some questions about the deceased, your former employee. Now, you are the director of Asheville Concrete Limited, correct? Yes. You're responsible for managing the activities that take place within the yard, correct? Well, well yes and no. I do, there, is a, there are managers within the... As the director, your overall responsibility is to ensure that the business carries out what it's supposed to, isn't it? Yes. You accept that as part of that responsibility, that you owe a duty of care to the people that work for you, don't you? Yes. And that includes things such as training, doesn't it? Yes. It includes such things as undertaking maintenance on equipment and vehicles, correct? Yes. It also includes not placing your employees at risk. Yes. You accept that? Is there any particular reason why you're reluctant to answer my questions? No, no, I'm, I'm just ensuring I understand the question properly before I answer it. If there's anything you're not clear about, please ask me and I'll rephrase the question. Now, this duty of care applies to all of your employees, correct? Yes. And this would include Mr. Duff, wouldn't it? Yes. Um, as you would refer to him, Terry. 
Yes. Mr. Louisi, please speak up so that everybody in the courtroom can hear you. Yes. Now, would that duty of care extend to the HGV driver? Yes. You're aware that the cause of the accident was as a result of the HGV driver reversing and fatally colliding with Terry, correct? Yes. At the time the incident happened, there was no banksman, was there? There, there, there were banksmen in the, in the vicinity, but the, the driver didn't wait for the banksman. Let me rephrase the question. At the time that the driver was reversing, was there a banksman helping the driver manoeuvre? At the time of the incident, no, but there were banksmen in the vicinity, in the yard, under my employment at the time. But were those banksmen working and assisting that HGV driver? They, they were working, but at that present moment in time, they weren't assisting that driver. And you accept that when the HGV driver is reversing, that it's very important that there is a banksman assisting? Yes. Now, tell the court why it's important for a banksman to help a HGV driver reverse. Because you can't fully see in a HGV you have loads of mirrors and cameras, but your vision is obscured and there are blind spots. So you accept that the policy and practice is for drivers not to manoeuvre without the assistance of a banksman, correct? Yes. So when this driver was driving without the banksman, this person was unable to see 100% clearly, correct? Yes. And do you accept that that contributed to the death of Terry? It did contribute to the death of Terry, yes. Did you provide training to this driver? Well, when, when the driver, training, I should, the driver learnt to drive elsewhere. He did his driving test like you would with a car. And he came, he did an induction, he was told the rules of the site and what to do in case of an emergency. Uh, Mr. Louise, let me ask the question again. Did you provide training for the driver? And uh, when I say you, I mean Asheville. Did Asheville provide specific training for this driver? Well, the driver, the driver was told what, what to do, that you need to wait for a banksman. Did the driver comply with those policies and requirements? Well, at that time, no. That's why this happened, because the driver didn't, he didn't follow what he's meant to do. Do you accept responsibility for that driver's failure? Do I? No I, no, I do not accept responsibility for that driver's failure. Now, we'll go back to the question I asked you at the beginning. Are you telling the court that you did everything within your power to avoid the death of Terry? I think I did everything in my power to prevent it. Well, let's take that in stages. You did everything in your power. The first time that the driver conducted a move without a banksman, you didn't fire the driver, did you? No, but I've provided, I've given the driver instructions and there is a, and there is a banksman. I've, I, I've given I, well, I, I, well, I can't, well, let, be, I, take, I can't let, let, be everywhere at the same time. Well, 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 let's stop. There was no banksman assisting the HGV driver reverse. No, there was no banksman assisting, but the driver knew... That is a health and safety risk, isn't it? Yes, but... Wait, wait. Th th there are more questions, and I'll give you an opportunity to answer in full. That's not the first time that the driver has acted in this way, correct? Uh, I've had to speak to the driver in the past, yes. Well, for the purposes of the, the court record, this is not the first time that the driver has acted in this way. No. It's not the second time that the driver has acted in this way, correct? Correct. In fact, this is the third time. Correct? Yes. Unfortunately, three strikes and Mr. Duff is out now, correct? Now, tell the court, you know, the explanation you're going to give to them about, you know, why not having a banksman isn't a health and safety risk. Not having a banksman is a health and safety risk, but there was a banksman in the yard. There are multiple people um, who are trained to be banksmen, but the driver, he's been given instructions, but he didn't wait and he well, reversed well, on well, his... Well, I, I can't, well, 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 I can't well, well, be well, everywhere well, well, at once. Let's take it I can't be everywhere well, well, at once and stages. drive every single lorry let, myself. Let, let, I can't, let, what let, am I supposed to do? Let's take it stages, Mr. Louisi, right? This is behaviour that the driver has exhibited before, correct? Correct. Do you accept that the action you took the first time was inadequate? No, I mean, I had a conversation with the driver and I had very strong words with him. Well, you don't accept that the action you took the first time was not inadequate, just for the purposes of the court? No, I don't believe it was. The second time, are you saying that the action you took was adequate? 
I had a strong conversation with the driver well, well, and I reminded well, 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 him of the rules are, that he's done. Are you saying that that action was sufficient? Looking back now, maybe, possibly it was. It, looking back now, it, no, it doesn't seem that it was sufficient. Well, on the third occasion, you accept that based on your failure to take action, Terry died. I don't think that that's based on my failure to take action. Somebody's driving a vehicle, there's not, I've provided training, I've provided everyone with PPE to wear. The vehicle, well, hold on, the vehicle is serviced, I can show you everything in the yard works perfectly. The lorry didn't slip, the lorry's in perfect working order, and, and people have got training. How could, what? You accept that during your watch, that this driver made two mistakes, correct? It's not really my well, watch well, because well, 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 the driver made two mistakes. He did, but it's not. It's let's, not and let's explore those mistakes. Those mistakes involved the driver not listening to you and following company policy, correct? Yes. Those mistakes involved the driver not following health and safety rules, correct? Yes. That behavior involved the driver placing other employees at risk, correct? Yes. You did not stop that driver from driving, did you? No, I did not stop that driver from Despite driving. Despite you being aware that this person had a propensity of not listening and following rules, correct? I don't know what that word means. Had a habit of not following rules and listening. I wouldn't say the person had a, uh, had a habit. The person comes to work every day, they do their jobs, well, their paperwork. Let's explore I'm that. You that said that the person doesn't have a habit. If someone doesn't do something once, you accept that that might just be a mistake or a genuine error, correct? Correct. The person does it twice, it's less likely to be a mistake or a common error, correct? Mr. Louise, the questions will get harder. I can't hear you. Your Honour earlier spoke to you about speaking up. Mr. Louise, right. answer the question. Correct. So if someone does it three times, you'd accept that that's less likely to be an error or a mistake, correct? Correct. And you could have prevented it. How could I have prevented it? I don't understand. You keep saying that I could have prevented it. You I've could have fired the driver. Do you have any records or documentation detailing the conversation you had with the driver and the action plan and steps that you took after the two incidents? No, but there's plenty in the people, plenty of people in the yard heard me. I had the- well, I, well, well, let's, let's not focus on what people heard. Let's focus on what you did and what you failed to do. Do you accept that you had two instances to prevent a fatality occurring on your yard? I, 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 don't, I don't see how, if I provide somebody with training and I tell them what to do and they don't follow it, like I, just, I, don't, I don't see how well, that's my fault. Well, I, I well, well let, let's explore this because um, as a director, you're certainly giving evidence that's not consistent with someone that wants to take responsibility. So you accept that it's your responsibility to, you know, ensure that your staff are fit for purpose and fit for work, correct? Yes. So if you have members of staff that don't listen and follow the rules, do you accept that it's your responsibility to take action? Yes. You did not take action, did you? I did, I had a very strong word with the driver. Do you take health and safety serious? Very, so, very serious. Would you say that it's one of your number one priorities? Definitely, yes. And it has to be because of the nature of the work that you do, correct? Correct. Um, it's a very dangerous industry, right? Yes. One mistake and someone can die. Yes. Um, as we've seen. Do you have your company's health and safety policy in front of you? I do. This is a document that you signed, correct? Yes, it's, it's a statement of intent. And this statement provides an overview of your responsibilities, correct? Yes. And a commitment that you ensure your employees and those that come into contact with your services, correct? Yes. Now, can you take a look at the document? Yes. Now, can you go seven paragraphs down where it starts to ensure? You see that? Yes. Can you read it out to the court, please? To ensure our business operations do not cause risk to the health and safety of our employees or to others who may be affected by our business operations. Now, pause there. Do you accept that failing to remove the HGV driver 
doesn't comply with that, that statement. If I went round sacking everybody that didn't listen once, I'd have no employees I'm, left. I'm so sorry. Do you accept by not removing that HGV driver that that does not comply with that statement? In some ways, yes, not totally. And are you telling the court that the behaviour of the driver did not cause risk to health and safety? It did cause a risk, yes. So if it caused a risk to health and safety, you accept that that doesn't comply with your policy statement, does it? Yeah, it doesn't, but it's my policy statement, it's not the well, driver's well, well, policy let's, statement. Let's, 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 so the driver's behaviour didn't comply with the policy statement, and this is the third time that the driver's done it, correct? Yes. You accept as a director that you are responsible for the conduct of your employees? Well, I can't be entirely responsible for everyone. I don't, like, I can't be everywhere at so the same are, time. So, so are you saying, as a matter of law, that as a director, you're not responsible? No, I am, ultimately, I am responsible. How many this. members of staff do you have? Do you have more than five? Pardon? Do you have more than five members of staff? I do. So do you accept that you have a responsibility? Yeah, I, I know my responsibilities. I, if I have more than five, I know the law. I have, well, if, I have, if you know the law, tell us what the law is, Mr. Luizzi. If I have more than five members of staff, I have to have a policy like this on show, readily available. I have to have it up in the office and everybody well, needs to be well, able to well, see it. Is the purpose of the policy, you know, for it just to be paperwork and not to be followed? No. You accept that it wasn't followed? I accept that that particular driver at that particular moment didn't follow the policies that well, I had well, put in place. You've just told the court at a particular moment, but you accept that this is the third time that the driver didn't follow. That's correct, isn't it? Yes. So it's not at that particular moment, it's the third time, correct? Yes. Now, if you go down, can you have a look at the document, please? I'm looking. I'm only doing my job, there's no need to be hostile. I'm not, um, being, I'm not being hostile. Can you look at the line that says, to continually improve. Yes. Can you read it out to the court, please? To continually improve our health and safety policy at regular intervals or at other times where events such as significant health and safety incidents or the introduction of new or updated legislation dictates. So do you accept that a HGV driver reversing without a banksman is a significant health and safety incident? Yes. Um, you accept that that's an incident that happened at least on two occasions before Mr. Duff's death, correct? I know where you're going with this. Um, I'm sorry, can you ask the question? Mr. Luizzi, please just answer the questions that you're asked. Yes. Did you update any of the policies after those two incidents? Why would I? Uh, no, I didn't. I wouldn't update an entire health and safety policy because one person out of 60 employees didn't listen to something. I had a conversation with the driver repeatedly. You cannot go around. Well, you have to understand. Well, I'm in well, a Mr. difficult Lu position. Mr. Mr. Wait, Mr. hold on. Mr. Sorry. You have to understand. You're in a difficult position here. I have 60 people working for me. If I fired everybody every time they made a mistake, there would be nobody working in any company anywhere. It was completely out of my control. I provided all the training, the vehicles. The driver didn't wait. One incident, and it, it's sad. It's very sad what's happened. This isn't one isolated incident. This is the third occasion. Correct. Correct. Are you telling the court that a chat is sufficient to deal with significant health and safety incidents? It was a very strong word. Clearly the person didn't listen to you because it's something that happened more than once, correct? You could look at it like that, yes. So do you accept that the word was not sufficient and that you should have taken more action? In hindsight, yes. Can you turn to the second page of your health and safety document, please? I know what it says, I wrote it. Now, if you look four paragraphs down, ensure the maintenance of workplace. Can you read that, please? Ensure the maintenance of workplaces under our control in a condition that is safe and without risk to health, which includes the provision and maintenance of safe access and egress routes. Well, this didn't happen um, when Mr. Duff was struck by the HGV vehicle, did it? It was, just, it was the, the, it, the, the area was safe, the area was clear, the vehicle was maintained, the yard is maintained, the driver didn't wait for a banksman. And do you accept that that was your fault? Do I accept that it was my fault that a driver didn't wait for a bank? Do I accept that that's my fault? Yes. Do I accept that it's my fault that somebody 
reversed in a lorry without waiting for someone else when I told them on two occasions before, do I accept that that's my fault? Yes. I don't accept that that's my fault, no. So, are you saying that you employ someone who potentially um, poses a risk to others, um, has done so on at least two occasions, and that's none of your responsibility? Let's take an example, Mr. Luther. You haven't answered the question, but let's take an example. If you are made aware that you have a driver driving recklessly on the road, causing risk to, to passers-by, you have a word of that driver, and the driver doesn't listen and does it again. Do you accept that you have a responsibility to make sure that the driver doesn't go back on the road again? Yes. Do you accept the similarities between that example and what happened on this occasion? Yes. Do you accept that you did not do everything within your power to prevent this from happening? So some questions about Terry. You know Terry for a very long time, hadn't you? Yes. To the extent that not only was he an employee, he was someone that you would frequent with in a social capacity, correct? Yes. So it was more than a work relationship? Yes. You're aware that he was married? Yes. Um, you're aware that he had children? Yes. In fact, you'd, you'd met the child, correct? Yes. What's his child's name? Cora. Have you seen the family since this incident happened? No. You've not spoken to the family at all? No. How do you think the family feel? I imagine it's very hard. Again, I'll ask you the question. Do you think that you did all that you could do to prevent this from happening? After today, no. You accept that no insurance payout could ever compensate the family for a loss of a husband and a loss of a father, correct? Yes. You accept that the driver in question should have been fired, correct? You accept that he should never have been in that vehicle on that day? Yes. You accept that had he had not been in that vehicle, that Terry still would have been here with us, correct? Yes. Now, Mr. Luisi, if you could turn the clocks back, what would you do? dealt with the driver differently. Well, it's too late now, isn't it? Yes. We can't turn the clocks back, can we? No. And you accept that you had at least two occasions to prevent that driver being in the vehicle on the day in question, correct? Correct. And as a result of your failure, a wife has lost a husband and a child has lost a father. You accept that, don't you? Yes. No further questions. Mr. Louisi, the jury have found you guilty as the director of Asheville Concrete of corporate manslaughter. Sentence will be adjourned, but you will receive a substantial fine. Fines cannot and do not attempt to value a human life in money but you will receive a fine that will have a real economic impact on your company. Mr. Luisi, bail as before. So I have been found guilty of corporate manslaughter and I've been released on bail. I have to return for sentencing. Now, the financial fines which are given out are meant to significantly impact the company to make shareholders and directors take health and safety very seriously for the people who work within the company and the public. These fines could range from £180,000 to £20 million, depending on the turnover of the company. It's important to remember that I could have actually been tried for gross negligent manslaughter which could have resulted in a life prison sentence and it doesn't end there. Terry's family could then sue Asheville and myself in civil courts. 
As you can see, Terry is in reasonably good health. I want to thank Terry and the rest of the team here for agreeing to take part in this video. Now making it was very difficult and intense, but we felt it was important and responsible to do with the voice and audience that Asheville have. How did it make you feel watching it, Tal? Um, I think it really highlights the importance of taking safety around the workplace very seriously. Um, it brought home to how easily and quickly these things can happen and escalate into a very, a very, very dangerous situation. Um, definitely during the court scene video, the court scenes that we saw with you, bringing up the photos of me and Cora on screen, it definitely hammers home. Obviously everyone wants to come to work and be safe, but it just highlights how important it is to actually take it seriously and, and make it your responsibility to get home to see your family at the end of every day because essentially we, we come to work to earn a crust for those people. So yeah, it, it, just, it ham just really, really hammered home how important it was. While fatalities in the workplace in the UK is on a decline, there is still on average over 100 deaths a year. Now in 2020, there were 39 deaths recorded in construction and 35 deaths from falling from height. It's chilling to know that in the past 10 years, over 260 workers have lost their lives being struck by a moving vehicle while at work. When you're grinding 24 seven and growing your business, it's easy to lose focus and only concentrate on the things that generate revenue. But running a business is about more than just the bottom line. As a company director, you have a responsibility to your employees to provide a safe working environment. Ultimately, a company director is held accountable for the actions that take place within the company. However, we all have an obligation to behave responsibly, be vigilant, and follow company procedures and safe working practices. Because at the end of the day, we all want to go home. Thank you for watching. I hope this video can highlight and help improve health and safety in at least one company. I know after filming this, I most definitely look at health and safety in a different way at Asheville.